Hi wonderful people, I am here with a, a box. Uh, this is a box for the widest of boys, the Lauer 9mm 2.8. I picked up this lens uh, about a week ago. I haven't had a chance to even open the box and play with it, but uh, it's pretty simple. It's a box and inside there's some foam and the box and, and a little bag that has the lens. This is the Lauer 9mm 2.8. Uh, it is a manual focus lens, so no autofocus in this regard. Uh, it's little, it's made out of metal, it's really well constructed and it's a native mount for the M6 Mark II. So today I thought to put it through its paces rather than uh, wait till I get a chance to go out and do some landscape I would take a Sunday morning I'd come into the city and we'll try some cityscape. Now I know what you're thinking big old wide lens in the city you're just going to end up with lots of bowed fisheye looking buildings and it's not going to be so great. No this is a zero distortion lens it has straight lines it's rectilinear so we shouldn't it should be very interesting to be able to fit larger buildings be able to get some really interesting unique perspectives and uh, yeah we'll, we'll see see what this lens can do. Okay so right now I'm sitting in my car obviously you're looking at me through the eyes of a 15 millimeter lens or the 15 to 45 kit lens to be precise. Hey, it's pretty wide but I just wanted to demonstrate how much wider another six millimeters gets you when you drop down to the nine millimeter. So we'll throw this lens on now and and see the difference. So this is it, this is 9mm, it's huge right? It's crazy how much wider this is. Now it's not the best for video for a couple of reasons. For a start, to focus, it's manual focus only, you have to use focus peaking. I'm also running it at its most open f2.8, which uh, is, is great for depth of field, but potentially not so good for making sure your video is in focus. It also doesn't have stabilization, which means you do need to run this on a gimbal or some kind of other stabilization if you're going to use this for video at all. Now there is a trick also to getting manual lenses to work on the M6 Mark II. You need to set a custom function to allow the shutter to fire without a lens on because there's no way for the camera to know that there's a lens on the camera when it's fully manual, when there's no communication between the lens and the camera. So you need to go into your custom functions, level three, tab number four, and turn on enable shutter without a lens. And then now you can use a manual lens on your camera. Congratulations. Now that's enough of this waffling in my car. Let's go out and do some first person photography and try this lens out. Okay, so let's see our first picture. Look how wide that is, look at this. I'll come down a little bit, I'll just open up my screen so I can see. Just focus on there. Try to get this whole thing in. And that's landscape. Look, if I go portrait, you can shoot this whole thing easily without even trying. Let's get this bus in the shot. There we go. This, this one could be a trick. Uh, in interesting one to try to edit lately it's kind of a focus I'm just waiting for these people to move so that I'm quite a high actually I might drop the and we'll just snap that one again that's a 2.8 one thing I really like about the shutter ring is that it clicks so as you're turning it around you're actually going to get a click which is fantastic because uh, you can feel if you know you're at the lowest point you can feel and count the clicks rather than having to look at the lens every time there's an old beautiful bank building like normally you could never get the whole thing in the shot, but today we don't even have to try. There we go. I'm also shooting all these photos quite flat uh, just so that I can have a better attempt at color grading later. So let's try this out on the sculpture. about there, medium size, is how close we can get to it. So I'm standing now about, let's see, this thing's twice as tall as me, I'm standing probably two meters from it. So pretty close, as you can see with the focusing, the focus as close in as I can get. And we'll have a chair, it's got a little bit of, now this, this lens does focus up to 12 centimeters, so I should be able to get really close I still get a thing in focus and at 2.8 it's not the widest of apertures so I'm just trying to see there let's try this 
really interested to see how these all come out focused or not once we get back because it is very tricky when using a manual lens when you're out of practice to know exactly where things are in focus. These larger buildings and the like are pretty easy. As you can see if I go out of focus there's no red. If I come into focus there's a lot of red. But it is kind of more difficult than using obviously the autofocus if that's what you're used to. So it does take some practice and some time to get it right. It's also my first time using focus peaking. In the past I haven't had to rely on these red lines, I've just used my eyes. But because I'm doing this first person and using the back screen instead of the EVF, I've decided that it's a much better idea if I use focus peaking so I can actually see if I'm in focus. And again mostly controlling my exposure with the shutter speed. Of course you can get much more exciting photos using a slow shutter speed but this uh, this day is a bit too bright so we might have to come back to the city at night sometime. I think this could be a really good nighttime cityscape photography lens. Famous Vulcan Lane. Where normally you'd have to stand a long way back but today we can get the whole thing in. Again, harsh shadows today, so it's not ideal. Hopefully you can hear me with all this wind. Let's see if we can get this whole thing in. Oh, look at that, not even trying. Not even trying. Now, it's not only good for um, tall buildings, but something like the sign, for example, you can get it nice and close. But you can see the lines are straight. There's very little distortion on this lens. They say it's zero distortion, I would say it's mostly distortion free. Okay, so we're significantly closer now. Let's have a look. Look at that, it just fits in so perfectly, so easy to crop, easy to focus. I would like if I could get more depth of field on the closer items, but... I don't get much closer than that and keep a straight line, that's for sure. Now let's see if this is wide enough to get this unique perspective. It is. There's another building that you'll recognize if you've, uh, well, if you saw the intro to this video. This is the Auckland Art Gallery, all of its glory. Again, something, when I took that photo I had to be very far away from it. There we go, perfect. See how close we can focus. Just drop that down so we can see. It's about there. If I come around, you can see that's how far away I am. So you're talking 12 centimeters from here to here. And this is where the sensor line is. From here, where the sensor line is, to the subject. That's as close as you can get. I'm going to try something really different. I'm just going to leave this on the ground right here. Got it focused on its closest focal length. And no idea what that's going to look like or how it's going to come out. Let's just bring that up a little bit. Move towards the middle. I just want to focus so I can actually see some red come in. There we go. So we're at the top of the stairs now. We can capture this whole courtyard. So I'm just going to open up that focus a bit. Drop down the speed so we've got plenty of light. Let's go exploring. Oh wow. That is unique. Again, I'd actually like to be close of it. Look at that vine growth on the wall over there. I'm just going to darken that up so we can see it properly. Let's just get this graffiti on the wall. See how close we can get. So the red, I'm just going to darken that down. There we go. I've got red on the texture. So now I know that I've got it in shot. One thing that's always hard to get into shots is any artwork. Get this with the, I quite like that with the starburst on the top. So let's just uh, get our focus up till we've got it all in. 
close for focus. There we are, there's the town hall in all of her glory. And I'm miles away for a photo, which means we can get lots closer. Look at that, that's a good one. Just walk up. I mean, you, as you get closer, you're going to end up with the part of the building being tall and perspective out of the image. Which isn't ideal if you want to get a photo of the clock face, but... At the same time, so you're going to get straight lines being rectilinear, but you do need to uh, make sure that things aren't just perspective out of the image. Or at least to the point where the, it sort of breaks the feel of the photo. Here is a, a statue of the previous Auckland Mayor, and we're going to drop down our exposure a little bit here, around this side. As you can see, it's not too bad. Like, it's not come quite close and the depth the depth is there but there we go lighten them up a bit again it's far too bright a day to be doing this if he was under the tree it'd be better but you can see that you didn't get a lot of if we have a look at that image there's not a lot of distortion in, in terms of um, Warping on the face, it's not protruding too much, but you're going to get that extreme depth that 9mm gives you. So now that I've had a chance to sit down and play with the photos and, and edit them, um, most of them were in focus. Uh, despite my lack of practice with a manual focus lens for a while, uh, this lens makes it very, very easy. Uh, the images were nice and sharp, nice and clear. The, the color profile was really good. I didn't find that I had too much vignetting in the corners or anything like that. Um, it's very competent. I can't wait to get this out and try it with landscaping and maybe some astrophotography and just play with it a lot more. But it is very artsy, so unless you're going to be using it for something, for example, like real estate photography where you're trying to get a whole room in, uh, I don't think this lens is for everybody. But if you want a different perspective, if you want a nice wide perspective for your photography, I do recommend it. Vlogging and things like that, you might be better off going for something like the uh, EFS 10 to uh, 18 or even the 11 to 22 in the EFM range. Uh, but for photography and for something that's just different, um, I highly recommend this. Um, I like wide perspectives, but I'm not a fan of fisheye, and this just ticks all those boxes. So thank you very much for watching. Hopefully you found this video useful. If you did, you know, smash bells and ring likes, all that sort of thing. And um, yeah, we'll see you in another video. I'm just going to leave you with a few of the photos that didn't make the, the full length video now. So if you've skipped to the end, I mean, you just saved yourself watching me wander around taking photos and, and you get to see them anyway. But um, yeah, we'll see you again real soon. Thanks for coming. Bye.